Hi, I'm Philip Taylor. I am the lead author on a paper coming out in the journal Nature on April 22, 2010. My co-author Alan Townsend and I are from the University of Colorado's Institute for Arctic and Alpine Research in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. Our paper addresses the growing problem of nitrogen pollution worldwide. One of the most important discoveries of the 20th century was the creation of chemical fertilizer. Standing as a pillar of the Green Revolution, the application of nitrogen-rich fertilizers increased crop production and are vital to global food security. Its use in developing nations helps alleviate poverty. For example, the distribution of fertilizer in agricultural education has tremendously improved human health and economic conditions in Malawi, Africa. Yet much of the fertilizer put in farm fields is not used by plants, but migrates with rain into streams and lakes, to coastal estuaries, and eventually the ocean. The downstream effects can be damaging for ecosystem and human welfare. Nitrate, a particular reactive form of nitrogen, causes a multitude of negative consequences, including harmful algal blooms, dead zones in waters like the Chesapeake Bay and the Gulf of Mexico, and it also may increase the risks of several human diseases. These problems have sparked a growing number of, of governmental agencies and organizations to develop management policies aimed at reducing the levels of nitrate in the environment. Yet there's been marginal success in understanding what controls the buildup of nitrate in ecosystems worldwide. This is where our paper offers fresh insight. We describe a new way to understand how and why nitrate builds up and is depleted in ecosystems worldwide. First, we discovered and report a strong relationship between organic carbon and nitrate. The relationship, when plotted on a graph, looks much like a hockey stick. Nitrate on the y-axis, organic carbon on the x. This relationship is seemingly in every ecosystem in the world. We show that the pattern exists in soils, streams and rivers, lakes and wetlands, estuaries, and coastal margins, and the open ocean across the globe. The pattern is also strong in agricultural and urban places. In the paper, we describe the mechanisms that produce these patterns, and they could have influence for policy decisions. Returning to my simple graph that illustrates the relationship between nitrate and organic carbon in Earth's biomes, the strength and global presence of this pattern tells us that when organic carbon is high in any given ecosystem, so in this area of the graph, Nitrates very rarely accumulate. However, when organic carbon and nitrate abundance are equal, near to this point in the graph, nitrate can build up with all the negative consequences that result. I believe our findings should be integrated with established techniques to understand and predict the rise of nitrate in ecosystems. Downscaling from global relationships to local scenarios could be useful for alleviating problems caused by nitrogen pollution. In fact, I am currently speaking to you from southwest Costa Rica, where I am testing these ideas in tropical landscapes. We believe and hope our framework could help guide discussions around nitrogen policy and aid managers that need to control nitrate accumulation. Unquestionably, there are indispensable benefits of nitrogen fertilizer use by humans. Yet the challenge ahead is really to maximize these gains while minimizing the negative impacts that nitrogen pollution has, both for the environment and for people. 